Greetings, DCNs. This is Arthur Karmaldi coming to you directly from Bali. And uh, this in this webinar that we have organized for you, it's being done by our new managing director, Stephen Reynolds. And this is literally the master of masterminds. In fact, this is how we met. I, I originally met Stephen about three years ago, uh, and, and we basically have been in the same mastermind group for the past three years. And see, the, what he's going to talk to you about is a very simple concept, but a very, very powerful one that will make an impact on your success and, and not just success in business, not just success in the training and, and uh, people development field, but success in pretty much every part of your life. And, and I, I personally have benefited so much from this and I owe Stephen a lot uh, because, you know, he's the one that really got me involved and, and into understanding and using the mastermind uh, to develop DC and everything that, you know, I've created, Avalon, etc. So without, uh, you know, rambling on any further, I would like to introduce Stephen Reynolds himself. Dun, 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 the master <laughs> of the mastermind. <laughs> well, uh, Arthur, thank you for the dun, dun, dun uh, introduction. I appreciate that very much. And uh, guys, Arthur asked me what I could do to support the licensees and to uh, uh, really just give you something that would that would really bless you that, and that would really give you uh, a real edge. And uh, absolutely what has made the biggest impact in my life is not the, the 4,000 books in my library. Uh, it has been the mastermind. Um, it, and the, the mastermind has really given me that edge. And uh, we're going to share a little bit about that with you today. And so um, let me jump right into it. I'm going to be sharing a little bit about my story. Uh, but we're also going to be dealing with the uh, origin of the mastermind and what the mastermind promises. Uh, this is some really mind-blowing stuff. And the next statement, uh, you do not have to believe the next statement. Um, I want to say that there was a, a little bit of skepticism uh, in myself when I first heard about the mastermind because... Uh, the promises that I heard were just absolutely kind of outrageous. But I'll suggest to you that this is the only success system that works consistently. And I'll, I'll put that word consistently in there, and I'll, I'll qualify that uh, here in a little bit. So, uh, guys, please turn off your cell phones, turn off the radio, TV, close down Facebook, Twitter, MSN, Skype, anything along those lines. And if you get any aha moments, please do take some notes. We're not going to be getting uh, really technical tonight. Uh, I will be covering some mastermind psychology in some, uh, in, in some upcoming videos here with you guys. Uh, but, uh, but do take notes. Write down your questions. Uh, and please uh, let me know what those questions are. And if you, uh, if you would like to reach me, you can reach me at Stephen, that is S-T-E-P-H-E-N, at directivecommunication.com. But, but don't call him Stefan because it really bugs him. Yeah, yeah, thank you for that, Arthur. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it is Stephen. It's pronounced Stephen, uh, even though it's spelled with a PH. Uh, and so I really appreciate that. So uh, we're going to be talking about how to make a success a part of your everyday life. Uh, and we're also going to be talking about uh, this in relationship to the law. Uh, we're going to be talking about the law of association. And now, in my humble opinion, that's what I-M-H-O means, in my humble opinion, uh, this is much more powerful than the law of attraction. Again, you do not have to believe me on this. Uh, please feel free to... Uh, uh, to challenge this, but I think the deeper that you start to get into this and the more you start to understand now about the uh, power of the mastermind, I think that the same realization that occurred to me will also uh, occur to you. So why do one to three percent of people achieve success? Why, why do only one to three percent actively participate without being told to do so? Why do 1% to 3% of people have a written down goals with a plan for achievement? Why do 1% to 3% of people have coaches, 
mentors and belong to a mastermind. And I hope that you start to see the, I hope you start to see the, the plan there. As you start to look at people that you consider massively successful, I think that I personally have not found an exception uh, that all of them are involved in a mastermind, either a structured mastermind or an informal mastermind. I have never found an exception to this rule. And uh, as you begin to start to look at things with new eyes and a new per uh, a perspective, as your RAS starts to get tuned in to looking for masterminds, I think you're going to start to see the same thing. Wherever you find a Walt Disney, you're going to find Walt Disney's brother. Uh, now, many of you might not have known about Walt Disney's brother, but Walt Disney said that it, the reason for my success and the only person that's kept me from going completely bankrupt is my brother. And so he had someone there who was an active uh, mastermind participant with him who kept him in line, who was a, uh, a partner in more ways than one. And you'll see that theme repeating itself over and over. So, you know, as, as I go out in, I, I've been involved in the seminar business for, for many years now. And, and I see people that are seminar junkies. I see people that are information junkies, law of attraction junkies. And the same themes tend to come up. I, I see that people who read books, well, you know, really the books, the books are awesome. Uh, the information in them is awesome. But really, when it comes to getting results in people's lives, if, if all of those books worked the way that they purported to work, um, we wouldn't have that many poor people, would we? Is seminars. I mean, how many people go to, uh, you know, uh, Anthony Robbins seminars, Arthur Carmazzi seminars, my seminars, and they go out and they feel just pumped up. They feel motivated. They feel excited. And they go, you know what? I just got this incredible life-changing information. We, we all know that that uh, color brain and and uh, learning about the RAS, learning, this is life-changing stuff. And we see that it really does provide results. However, three months later, a lot of our, our participants don't always have the intense results that we would want them to have. They kind of slip back into old patterns. They kind of forget about things. We're going to find out about why that is, why great information doesn't always produce great results. We're going to be talking about that. Uh, and lastly, hard work don't work. Um, you know, we, it's been said before, we've got to work smart, not hard. And uh, definitely the mastermind facilitates that. So what, what are the challenges? Well, a uh, couple of the challenges, you know, sometimes there's just too much to learn. Uh, we get too distracted uh, with everyday life. Maybe there's too many negative influences in us. You know, a lot of us, we, we take responsibility and we say, hey, listen, you know, uh, the challenge is, is my lack of discipline. Uh, I, I've got stuff that I know I need to do, but I just don't do it. You know, I know I need to write that book, right? How many of you, if I can see, uh, see you raise your hand right now, how many of you would raise your hand saying, I know that I need to write that book, but I just haven't done it. You know what? Maybe there's some other challenges that are coming to your mind. What's your challenge? What has held you back from achieving your potential? What has held you back from you seeing the realization of your goals, of your dreams, of your hopes? Why don't you just start to write down all those things that have held you back? If we could do that now, if we could just pull out a piece of paper and a pencil or maybe pull up notepad on the computer, start to make some notes here. What has been your challenge? If I just had... X in my life, you know. I know a lot of people who, uh, um, you know, they think if if I could just get more money to invest in my business, boy, then then everything would change. You know, if I just hit the right contacts, oh man, then you know the, the right network. If if my parents, if I was raised rich, 
<laughs> then, well, you know, hey, listen, Donald Trump had a multimillionaire father, right? I mean, he had a guy who, he actually had a guy who, who raised him up. His, you know, his dad was a decamillionaire in real estate. And so he had that uh, foundation. Absolutely. He had a foundation to build on to become a billionaire. A lot of us don't have that. No, but I, I mean, okay, in my, in my perspective, I've actually had lots of money three times in my life. And I can tell you, it doesn't help. You just end up losing it or, or finding some way to mess it up. I am so grateful you said that. Guys, it, it, please write this down. You're going to use it in your seminars. Now, I don't, I don't know how many of you are familiar with America. In America, we have lotteries, but we don't just have any lotteries. I mean, we've got multi, multi-million. When people win the, win the lottery, they don't win a couple million bucks. They win 30, 40, 50, 100, 300 million dollars. I mean, these are massive lotteries. And you would not believe what happens to these people. 70% of the people who win these massive lotteries Five years later, 70% of them are completely broke and in a worse financial situation than when they got the hundred million. Now think about that. If you got a hundred million bucks, you would have to be throwing money out the window to burn it up in five years. And that's exactly what they do. Why? I'm actually waiting for an answer. Oh yeah, that was a, yeah, yeah. that was like not a rhetorical. No, no, no. Oh. I I was I was really may thought you may like to put because some... they do not have the psychology of a wealthy person. They have a psychology of a poor person. You are dang right. They well, are no bro. Duh. They're broke people with money. I mean, they are they are broke people with money, and yet they're still broke. And see, some of the same challenges are the same challenges you've been having. Because, see, well, you know what? I'm just going to leave it there. I'm just going to leave it right there. And, uh, and let's, let's, let's move on. We're going we're gonna to deal with this a little bit more. You know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results, Albert, Albert Einstein. And you know what? But we, we tend to be caught in a loop. You know, in neurolinguistic programming, they say we get caught in patterns, and it is absolutely it is absolutely true. We get caught in patterns of thinking. We get caught in patterns of the way that we respond to things. We get caught in patterns of what we think the solution is, and we end up in this conundrum. And you know, Einstein also had another quote, which was, "You cannot get." I'm going to butcher it here a little bit, but he says, "You cannot get out of a problem." with the same thinking that caused the problem. You've got to change your thinking. And uh, go ahead and you can look that up because it, I didn't quote it exactly correctly. But you know what? We do have to change our thinking. How can we change our thinking? You know, we tend to, even when we go out and we learn some really awesome stuff in books and we see a paradigm shift every once in a while, we get that aha moment. And things do change for a little bit. Things do change for a little bit. And I know many of you have received that with DC. You've, you've looked at it, DC, and you go, man, this stuff is awesome. Holy cow, I'm a green brain. I'm a red brain. That's why I'm so screwed up. And, and gosh, if I just could do this a little bit better, oh, that's why I have such a rough time with these relationships. And things do change. But you're, you're going, you know what? They have changed. I mean, things really have gotten better. I really do see things in a better light. But holy cow, I would like to shoot. I'd like to be shooting a heck of a lot higher than that. And I feel like DC should get me there. But there's this invisible anchor holding me back. There's a glass ceiling that I just can't break through. There's, there's another revelation that I seem to need. Well, that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about taking things to the next level. You know, uh, when I first heard about the mastermind, I, guys, I, I don't want to go into my story too much, but I'll, uh, I'll just say that I, I fell in love with learning. 
and I started to learn from really the, the, the smartest people on the planet. And I started to go uh, and and collect books. And I, I mean, I, by the time I got through, I mean, I had 30 books by Brian Tracy. And I had 27 by, you know, Kiyosaki and the Rich Dad Advisors. And I mean, I just dove head first into everything I could get. And I started looking at my own life and saying, hey, Holy cow, I, I am learning from the sharpest people on the planet. I should be a billionaire by now. You know, I, yeah, I'm seeing some really cool things happen in my life, but, but I'm expecting more. And then I ran across Napoleon Hill. And, and of course, if many of you know the story of Napoleon Hill, I, I'd like to, uh, if you haven't heard it, I, I really do want to share it with you. It's really worth mentioning. Napoleon Hill was a young reporter, and he went to go see, I believe it was Andrew Carnegie, the steel magnate. Now, this is a guy who made himself a billionaire from, from very, very poor beginnings. And Andrew Carnegie really kind of asked himself the question, he goes, why me? He goes, why am I special? What's different from me? than all these other people that are working for me that are not achieving the success that I had. And he uh, approached Napoleon Hill after, after an interview. Napoleon Hill was there to interview him. And he said, Napoleon Hill, I have a, I have a proposition for you. And he says, I'm going to give you five minutes to, uh, to accept or, or deny. He said, um, I want to hire you for the next 20 years. He says, uh, here's what I want to hire you for. He says, I want to open doors for you to interview the wealthiest people on the planet. And I want you to find out why they've succeeded, why they've become massively successful. And uh, Napoleon Hill, uh, your job is to use this information to make yourself wealthy. Now, I'm not going to pay you anything. You're going to have to go out and make yourself wealthy. But I will open doors and I will guarantee you that these people will spend as much time as you need. They will give you the audience. They, they will answer the questions. They will be forthright because I, I've got clout and I'm going to make this happen for you. Do you want this job? A job that pays nothing. Hmm. Napoleon Hill came back and said, sir, I would be crazy. To, to decline this offer, offer, I accept. And so Napoleon Hill just did that. He, he interviewed over 200 of the wealthiest people over the next 20 years. And over the next 20 years, he struggled, but he made himself wealthy. And the book that he wrote was Think and Grow Rich. And it is, I want to tell you, it, it, it changed the landscape. Now, uh, it changed the landscape of, of the way people think, the way people achieve success. It changed everything. It is one of the bedrock books next to the Bible uh, uh, when it comes to success. And uh, Napoleon Hill, no, no, everybody's work out there is based on Napoleon Hill in some way or another. And uh, he wrote a chapter, chapter 10, which happens to be step number nine, all about the mastermind. You can search this online right now. Just type in Think and Grow Rich free PDF and you will find this book for free on the internet because it's out of uh, what, out of copyright, okay? Because it's, uh, it's been around since like 1920 or something like that. And uh, get this book and go straight to the chapter about masterminds and read it. Read it before tomorrow. It's a short chapter. Read it. Uh, and here's some of the things that Napoleon Hill said about the mastermind. He said, the mastermind principle can give you absolute protection against failure. Now, I got to tell you, when we're talking about absolutes, you know, some people get absolutes absolutely squirrely when you start talking about absolutes. So in fact, some people say there's absolutely no such thing as absolutes. I'm not one of those people, but you know, absolute is a pretty strong word absolute protection against failure. Do you know nine out of 10 businesses fail? Nine out of 10. Do you know the people that really achieve success are one to 3%? That means 97% are failing. And you're telling 97 to 99. And you're telling me the mastermind principle can give you absolute protection. That's a pretty dogmatic statement. And I started to think, is that true? Is that true? Then he went on to say something else. He said, Napoleon Hill said, you must, 
Wow, must. Gosh, that's a pretty, that's a pretty obnoxious, straightforward kind of thing to say. You must. How do you feel when somebody says you must? I think I felt the same way. When somebody tells me I must, I go, forget you. I don't must anything. You know? But he said you must use the power of the mastermind to achieve your major definite purpose. Let me say that in a different word. You must use the mastermind if you're going to use your full potential, if you're going to see your full potential. If you're going to achieve everything you were meant to achieve, you must use the mastermind. I'm like, must? That means, let, let me deconstruct that a little bit. If Napoleon Hill, what he's saying is true, and it, I, I found it to be true, you may or may not. But if it's true, that means you cannot achieve your full potential without using the mastermind. That is a radical statement. And I got to tell you, that statement bothered me. It bothered me. And I started to say, you know, what is this? I've got a lot of books. Very few of those books talk about the mastermind. Very few. But then my RAS switched on. My RAS started to switch on. And I started looking around and I started to see a pattern. I started to see a pattern. All of a sudden, I started to see that, that Anthony Robbins had a mastermind. <laughs> Do you know... What Anthony Robbins, you know, Anthony Robbins has got several levels of masterminds, but I just want to tell you about this one. Anthony Robbins has a mastermind. If you want to belong to it, it'll cost you $1 million a year. A year. Yes, you heard me right. $1 million a year. What kind of person spends a $1 million a year to hang around with five to seven other really rich guys. Would you spend a million dollars to hang around with five to seven other really rich guys? Why would they do that? What is the benefit that would make somebody pull a million dollars out of their pocket, not for a lifetime, but for one year? Next year, it's gonna cost you another million. Guys, these people understand investment. They know what a good investment is. And, An and Anthony Robbins knows he can sell this, and he does sell this, <laughs> simply because it works. It works. It works. Well, I started looking at it, and I started going, well, tell me something, who else? was talking about the mastermind. I mean, is Napoleon Hill the first guy to come up with this? And then I ran into this guy, King Solomon. Now, King Solomon is no average guy. This is a guy who was the richest man who ever lived. By today's standards, he was more than a trillionaire. That means richer than Bill Gates and Warren Buffett put and Richard Branson put together put together. That's how rich this guy was. He was so rich. Uh, I don't know if we should go there, but he was so rich. He had a thousand wives. And I want to tell you, it takes an awful lot to be able to afford a thousand wives. Uh, you know, I, Lord knows I can barely afford one, but that's another story. So this is what he said. King Solomon said, where there is no wise counsel, the people fail. But in a multitude of counselors, there is victory. You know, every person I ask, I say, how many counselors do you have? How many people do you have that are really wise, that are really sharp, that you can call up on a moment's notice and get really good advice? Most of them say none. Every once in a while, they'll say one, two, three. I, I don't think I've ever gotten someone who said more than three now tell me something, is three a multitude? Three is not a multitude. How many wise counselors do you have? How many people do you have who have the solutions to your problems and you've got a relationship with them that you can create that solution? 
I'll tell you, this is powerful. Grab a hold of this. Uh, in uh, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Powerful Lessons in Personal Exchange. Here is Stephen Covey. What an amazing book here. I want to cover a couple things. Stephen Covey talks about time, and he breaks it up into four quadrants. And the first, uh, and the two quadrants are at the top, not important, and the bottom two quadrants are important. Those, those are the way he breaks up the four. And then over on the left, he breaks, he says, this is urgent. And on the right, it's not urgent. Now let's, let's go through this. In the upper left here, urgent, not important. This is distractions. I mean, I'll tell you, we do stuff that is urgent and not important. The phone rings. It's urgent, man. You've got to answer it. And as soon as you answer it, it's Aunt Mabel. And Aunt Mabel starts rattling on about all this stuff. I'm going to tell you, it's urgent because, darn it, when the phone rings, we run, don't we? But it's not important. Then there's on the right-hand side, not urgent and not important. Life wasters. What is up in this category? Uh, can someone say TV up in this category? Right. TV is a life waste. Don't justify the Discovery Channel and the History Channel. Don't do it. Don't go there. I want to tell you, once you've really started to learn, you'll realize that the Discovery Channel, when you watch it, it's more commercials about the Discovery Channel than really good content and more beauty shots. When you write down what you learn in a half an hour, you'll find out you, you learn about three or four points. It's These are life wasters. Okay, guys? Don't justify it. Okay, now in the bottom left is in urgent and important. This is we, you know going to work in the morning. If you got a job and you got to be there at nine, it is urgent and it is important that you get there on nine at nine. And you go there, and all of a sudden the emails are coming in, and the phones ringing, and a lot of important stuff happen, has to happen, and you feel like you're fighting fires all day. I mean, man, there's so much stuff going on in your life gets overwhelming, doesn't it? But see, that's what everybody lives. Everyone lives in those three quadrants, but this quadrant over to the bottom right here, success, success is here. This is not urgent, but it's very important. Well, what is here? What is down in this bottom right quadrant? Well, planning your future, making important VIP connections, writing a book, Writing a book is really important stuff. Take that from one of my mentors. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, <coughs> Arthur Carmazzi. <laughs> <laughs> Who's, how many books do you have right now? Six. Six books. Okay. Now, how many of you would like to be successful like Arthur? <clears throat> now, writing a book is not necessarily going to get you there, but I'll tell you, that's a pretty important start. Okay, uh, when you look at the DCNs that have really made uh, an impact, uh, Leslie, does Leslie have a book? Leslie Chatter, he's got two, three books, two books in print and the third one. And, and how much is he making a year? Last year he made over a million Singapore dollars. <laughs> how much was that? A million Singapore dollars? In a year as a trainer, as a trainer. Do you think that's a pretty good deal? Now, I'm not going to tell you that all Leslie's success or all Arthur's success is due to their books. But I want to tell you, it's not very urgent, is it? But man, it's important. Improving yourself, reading, thinking, doing what's important to you, planning your future. These things are not urgent, but they're very important. This is where success is. But you know what, Stephen? We, I, oh, I, oh, I, Stephen, I get so distracted. You, you don't know my life. I mean, Stephen, I got to wake up and I got to get the kids off to school and 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 th and then you know I got to get the husband off to work and and I got to do this and I, and then the, and the boss calls and 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 uh, you know next thing I know by the time Saturday comes I'm just a, I got to do laundry and I'm exhausted and oh and then I just have to turn on the TV because I can't take it anymore. Right. See, life does have a way of crowding out success, doesn't it? Well, you know, what happens now? I mean, what happens now that we have found out the secret of success? If you're anything like the 97 to 99.8% of people, what happens now is absolutely nothing. Nothing happens now. We learn something that is absolutely groundbreaking, something that could absolutely change our life, and yet nothing 
happens. See, I want you to read something very closely right here on the front cover of this book. I want you to take a quick look at this. Right here, Tom Peters says, this is a wonderful book that could change your life. Now, let me be a little cynical and let me read something into this. This book won't change your life. But it could. Is that what Tom Peters was saying? <laughs> I tell you, I've read enough books. I've read tons of books that could change my life. I had tons of books that have life-changing information in them. But see, it really doesn't work that way, does it? Lives really don't change, do they? Why? What's the missing piece? What's the missing piece? See, you need action, but you don't need just action, but you need consistent action. Well, gosh darn, consistent action. That sounds like discipline, man. Discipline, boy. How many people have you, how many books or products have you ever bought where they said, we're going to teach you discipline? Doesn't sell, does it? Doesn't sell at all. Who wants to be disciplined? Discipline sounds like something getting spanked when you're a child or something like that. I mean, discipline is just not a fun word. But what if, what if we could turn the not urgent into the urgent? What if you had a little voice inside your head that just said, do this now, write your book now, do it now, do it now. Come on, let's, let's do it. Write out your goals. Come on, do it now. Plan it, plan it out. Think about the future. Don't be overwhelmed. Take time. Don't turn the TV off. What if you could have that little voice inside your head that had as much power as your boss saying you had better be here on time? Arthur, can you think of any other examples of things that would happen if we could turn that little voice into the urgent? What, what would you turn into urgent? So see, the thing is that, you know, a lot of the trainers, okay, I mean, they don't really have bosses. And because they don't have bosses, oh. well, then, you know, you got, you got, you got your, your discipline problems. And we're not talking about spanking here. <laughs> okay, so, so, so see, see, the whole point of urgent Oftentimes, a lot of the trainers that, that, that a lot of the DCNs that I, I've talked to, you know, they say, oh, I, you know, I, I don't do marketing or I don't do this or, you know, and, and, and yet, e even though we've offered situations where they can support marketing by, by doing some simple things, it's like, oh, you know, I mean, even though it takes a few minutes, sometimes it just never gets done. And, and you know, I mean, I mean, we've been Ooh. sending a lot of people to Qatar and to Malaysia and we've been doing these culture change programs. And we do, we only basically choose the people who are actually supporting us and, and spending those extra few minutes here and there with us. And yet there's a lot of, there's a lot of people out there who, ha who just can't see the, the, that, that, that want us to send them, They're but, but, but they, but they have not consistently been spending a few minutes here and a few minutes there to support are, us. Are you trying to say that they're too busy and too distracted to succeed? Uh, apparently so. Wow, wow. So now, of course, there, there, there have been a number of people and we've been rewarding them, okay? Because they take, even though they may not be good at marketing, they at least take the thing that's, that they are good at and contribute. Now, tell me, does it, I, I know for a fact that this really bothers you, it Arthur. Does. It does. And because uh, I'm the kind of guy that takes, you know, I mean, I, you know me, I'm an action junkie. Yeah, yeah I, I can vouch for that. I can vouch for that. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that obsessive compulsive deal later, but that's, that's besides the point. But I want to, I want to say Arthur has a passion for your success because you know what? He understands, he gets that his success and DC success is also linked to your success. And um, he is really committed to making sure that you're successful, and that's why he's asked me to do this, uh, to do this uh, about the mastermind, to, to plant this seed of the mastermind in your heart and in your mind. And see, let me tell you how the mastermind works here. The mastermind is like putting success on your calendar. It's like just like, like an appointment with a client. It's like scheduling success in your life. What if you could do that? See, that's exactly what masterminds do. They put success on your calendar. Now imagine this. Imagine that you get together with your mastermind, which is a group of four to seven people, 
tra like-minded trainers like you. And you, other DCNs, absolutely, absolutely. And you say to those people, you know what I'm going to do this week? I'm going to make one small little goal, just one thing, one small achievable goal. I'm not going to tell you I'm going to write a book in the next week, but I'm going to maybe write a page, or even a paragraph. A absolutely, just one paragraph in this book. Or I'm going to do, I'm just going to do one small thing in social media. Or I'm going to just write one article, something small. And then imagine that you got distracted with life and your mastermind meeting started coming around again. And you knew that those mastermind members were going to say, hey, what did you do this week? Did you get it done? You made a commitment to do this last week. You did it, right? I got to tell you, that's kind of, it's kind of this peer pressure that feels good in a strange way. It's creating an environment that supports your success in the process of achieving greater objectives for the group. And I want to tell you, that's amazing because see, what would it be like if someone said to you, I'm committed to your success? I'm committed to your success. See, that's what masterminds do. Master, people, the only people that succeed in masterminds are people that are committed to their own success and giving and committed to others. And see, masterminds build real relationships. See, that's how, uh, that's how I ended up here. Because see, Arthur and I, without ever meeting face to face, we ended up in a real relationship to the point where Arthur said, I know you, Steve. I've, I've seen you. Uh, in the mastermind over these years, and I want to partner with you, and I, I'm, I, I want, I want you to be the managing director of my entire company over the entire world. I'm sending you a plane ticket, whether you like it or not. <laughs> and see those kind of relationships. What if you had people in your life that saw your value, that knew you, and knew how valuable you were? That's an amazing thing. And they were committed to your success. They were committed to your success. How many people do you have in your life right now that really know you, really care about you, and really are committed to your success? For most of you, that's not very many. That's exactly what masterminds do. So guys, masterminds work. Get a focus and clarity. Get a plan in your life. A mastermind schedules success into your life every meeting. It makes your success urgent. It gives you that little bit to do that little tiny discipline. We're not looking for big steps here. We're looking for baby steps until you can just build this into your life so that you can have the success that you've always wanted. Guys, 80% of success is just showing up. And the mastermind, just show up, guys. Just show up. Uh, my name is Stephen Reynolds. I'm so grateful I got a chance to meet all of you, if not in person, at least here on this video. Uh, please leave your comments. Um, or we're going to uh, post this in a place where you can leave your comments below. And I'm going to really try and uh, engage with you. I'm, I'm, I say I'm try because uh, I'm also really... Uh, really busy, but I'm here for you. And Squeaky Wheel gets the grease. Please ask ask your questions. Uh, please contact me again. My email is Stephen. That's S T E P H E N. You can see that my uh, name in the bottom right hand corner there. Uh, at directivecommunications.com. I'm here to support you. I'm here to bless you. Uh, get together with other DCNs. Start to put together a group of people to support yourself. We are going to be talking more about masterminds, guys. We have only scratched the surface. There is so much more to learn. Uh, we're going to talk about how masterminds work, the psychology of masterminds, um, how that masterminds change who you are as a person. Uh, how they keep you on track, how they get rid of nasty, you know, nasty people, uh, the strategies of uh, of running a successful mastermind. We're going to be talking about so much incredible stuff, uh, and uh, but that is for next time because we have run out of time. Arthur, I want to thank you so much for uh, for letting me do this. Well, I thank you for you know helping the DCNs out. And if you don't have like a group of people that you know you think you can get together with, just leave your comments here and and. And, and 
you know, say, hey, I'm looking for somebody to be part of my mastermind. And then, you know, you guys can kind of get together and, and, and let us know and we'll kind of match you up if you need to. Uh, we're going to be doing something that's a little bit more structured as, as far as this is concerned. Um, and uh, but we'll be talking to you about that a little bit more uh, a little bit more later. We want to make sure that we uh, that we deliver what we promise. So uh, that means we're not promising anything right now. So really take action get together with other people, set those small achievable goals, keep each other accountable. It takes time to really get to know and trust people. Okay. It takes time. And so expect that you're going to really start seeing results in three to four to six months, somewhere in there where those relationships really start to go deep. Also get together with each other once a week. Okay. On that note, that's enough for right now. Again, Arthur, thanks so much. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye for now, guys. Bye-bye guys. See ya.